Um, so it, it's absolutely wonderful because we had like two horror shows um, and one very useful contribution here. And I will get back to the horror stuff. Uh, and it's super fun because I, I, I really couldn't fathom that we would have two horror shows about MSVC tonight, uh, today, which is, it's wonderful, it tells a lot. And um, so I'm, I'm going to talk a bit about um, why we try to run MSVC on wine, how we have managed to pull it off, and a few of the things of the roadblocks we faced on the way as TP. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot. So the first question was, why would you do that to yourself? Um, well, uh, it turns out we had a customer that had a very interesting requirement and we were just experimenting with a uh, build distribution and they, were, they had the requirement that they needed to build four windows with MSVC and so we couldn't really cross compile with any of the classic stuff and the build distribution technology we were using was Linux only for the container side. So we were like, mm, we can't really do it, but we have a dumb idea. Um, so there was a lot of good reasons you want to do this, because Linux has great I.O. performance, there is no antivirus in your way, and TFS is like, there's many better file systems than NTFS in terms of speed at least. And there's a lot less quick tweaking required, etc. So there's a lot of good reasons why you might want to use a compiler like MSVC on an other operating system. And there's one special thing here, forking on, on POSIX or Unix is, is way faster, way faster. So there's also a good lot of reasons not to even try. Uh, obviously, no one kind of uh, thought of giving this a try in design phase of MSVC. Uh, I won't go into all the details of the ideas we came up with, why it's a really bad idea, but we did it anyway. Um, so the first very interesting stuff is how to get uh, an MSVC installation uh, on another system than Linux. Turns out that it's probably the last cause, cause to try to even run the official installer on Wine. Like I, I, I looked at the crash dumps, it's be, like I, I stopped uh, at, at the third or fourth try. And um, actually there was a genius thing is that they just published JSON um, manifest that contained kind of all the URLs and paths of the things you have to download. Then you just have to figure out how to put them in the right place. Um, we managed to solve this kind of. Uh, it's a 1,500 lines mess of Python at this point. Um, but we managed to kind of replicate the installer behavior of the MSVC installer and get a really nice and clean install on a Linux file system. Um, the next step was really interesting. Uh, who's familiar with uh, uh, MSVC or building on Windows here? Uh, so you might know about VC Varzol, which is your uh, good old friend that you need to make MSVC happy. Um, it turns out that that batch script is so complicated and does so many things that the command line interpreter of Wine can cope with it. Like it fails on the first few hundred lines by misinterpreting a simple if condition and everything blows up. Then again, I, I looked at uh, crash dumps and uh, tried to debug it and figured, well, sometimes you have to part ways. Uh, this, this, again, this was, this was kind of useful to have done the installer thing first because this VC all basically just sets 27 environment variables for you to be happy and we knew about mostly all of them. Um, so we generated them during install and now we can source them in Linux and, and everyone's happy. Uh, now for the really fun part. So we were, we were uh, basically implementing uh, build distribution. So we had a Linux computer driving the build in a emulated Windows environment. So you can imagine that like things like path don't look quite the same. Uh, and so do, for example, command line parameters. So um, on 
Linux, you typically see minus some flag name or double minus some flag name and a value for, for some command line flags. In Windows, you will see slash and then a name. And this kind of collides with path um, letters on, on, on Linux. So CMake, which we run on, on Linux in this setup, is happily generating uh, kind of useful things but, for example, here, msvc will see slash u as a parameter, which tells it to do something with a path it doesn't understand afterwards. So we had to implement a small um, uh, forward uh, uh, descent parser uh, doing a lot of command line, rewrite argu um, command line argument rewriting and use this as a com uh, compiler launcher in CMake. So, I knew, I now pretend that I know a lot about common line arguments uh, in the whole MSVC tool chain. There's a lot, and a lot of undocumented ones. Uh, thanks a lot, Microsoft. Um, and um, it, it's, it's basically used as a kind of shimming application uh, and, and does some magic. So you, you give it, uh, hey, intercalaire, launch CLXA with that bunch of parameters and internally it does some magic and it will turn this into something which makes sense under Wine uh, and then executes the CLXA with, with all of that in Wine. So was it, was it worth it? Hell yes. Uh, it's way faster and cheaper to get good compute in the cloud with uh, Linux on it. We actually see 20 to, uh, 10 to 20 percent faster builds just because of the differences in process model and this in spite of having Windows kernel level emulation going on. Uh, we can cross compile very easily for all the win targets that MSVC uh, is happy with. And uh, we can distribute the builds. And so uh, I, I know there's a couple of guys from Microsoft here. We should talk, it's awesome. Uh, <laughs> and it's wonderfully weird. Uh, so we, 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 I, the first time I saw make, CMake, launching make, launching um, MSVC in wine, I was like in awe and, and was like, this feels so wrong. <laughs> but <laughs> but it, it, it's, it's amazing. And so here's a few benchmarks. Um, there's the one I'm, I'm, I'm showing is basically we, we built all of Boost. Uh, on the, these numbers are, is that machine and basically even ha uh, incurring the cost of Docker and Hyper-V virtualization because this was running on a Docker on, on a Windows laptop. Uh, we get like 18... <laughs> we, we, we get like 18% out of that. Uh, and and if, if we gave it, give it, give the whole thing into a, an environment that is not thermally limited, we get even a bit more out. Uh, so it, it's really, really interesting. Uh, you can try it. Um, if you activate the trial and, and, and give us a call, we, we can make it happen. And uh, other than that, yeah, thanks and come look, have a talk with us at the booth. <laughs>